Honourable Member Courtney Alberney. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. It's, it's an honour and privilege tonight to join this debate. And this is uh, a debate that's long overdue, Madam Speaker, in terms of we need new ideas around the softwood lumber dispute, and we need a different approach. Canada and the United States have been fighting over this issue, over the softwood lumber uh, issue, for over 42 years, Madam Speaker. And it's time to stop the partisan politics. We need to work collectively in this place, come up with new ideas, and we need to take a Team Canada approach, a united approach, Madam Speaker. Now, I live in a community that's absolutely uh, hit hard by this dispute, Madam Speaker. And believe me when I say that many of uh, the people in our community and the mills and businesses, they won't be here for another 42 years, Madam Speaker, if this dispute carries on. Uh, it's time to change our approach. And, you know, 42 years it might be a long career for someone working in our mills or in the forest, people that are working hard. But, Madam Speaker, I'll tell you, they can't wait another 42 years, and our communities won't make it. Uh, you know, in terms of mills and mill workers and uh, timber and lumber and forestry workers and those that are out falling in our forests, they're, they're the backbone of the community where I live, Madam Speaker. Uh, we know fallers get up before dawn. They're ready to face some of Canada's most rugged and dangerous uh, terrain, Madam Speaker. We know that on April 28th is the day of mourning where we recognize those that are lost at work, Madam Speaker. Many of those people are foresters. Many of those are mill workers, Madam Speaker. And they do some of the most dangerous jobs in our country. Their work is crucial for Port Alberni, for the Alberni Valley, for Vancouver Island, and for the Canadian economy from coast to coast, Madam Speaker. And it's time that we spend way more time uh, ensuring that people that need a place to live, that we tie this issue into that, Madam Speaker. We have an opportunity where we can use softwood lumber to build homes. And I think about the mill, uh, some of the mills in my riding, like Sand Group, Madam Speaker, where they, uh, they, they mill uh, western red cedar, yellow cedar, uh, Douglas fir, hemlock spruce, Madam Speaker. We really need to, you know, we, we use softwood lumber, Madam Speaker, to, uh, for, for the roof over our heads. And we need to capitalize on that, Madam Speaker, given that we have a, a housing crisis. And it's also critical timing, Madam Speaker, because we have wildfires and a changing climate, which threaten, uh, obviously, uh, those mills, our lumber industry, Madam Speaker. And when, you know, loggers and mill workers need economic security more than ever before, Madam Speaker. And I, I, I want to cite that the United States, in terms of how they've uh, moved forward, they're looking at raising duties and causing even more harm, Madam Speaker. And the bigger problem, too, is, is it's not only harming Canadians, but it's actually harming their own citizens and people around the world. It's driving up inflation. So we've got an inflation crisis, which we know is global, Madam Speaker, because of global supply chains. But this is an absolutely unnecessary cost and impediment to people in the United States south of the border. We need to do a better job of educating Americans about the, uh, uh, the impact that those uh, lobbyists are having on their own people. So again, Madam Speaker, 42 years, 13 liberal and conservative governments, eight prime ministers, three temporary agreements, Two Prime Ministers with the last name that starts with T, and I won't say it here because I'm not allowed, Madam Speaker, we're still dealing with the same trade uh, dispute. And for decades, the Liberals and Conservatives have bickered back and forth about who's gotten the best deal, uh, and really, we know who's got the best of a bad deal. That's really what it's come down to, Madam Speaker. Now, I appreciate the Liberals are, uh, you know, have been fight in court fighting the harmful duties set up by the United States, but it's important to uphold the rules which form the foundation of our international agreements. And this needs to be fixed, Madam Speaker. This can't keep going. And every time Canada wins in court, we see that they prove that the actions of the United States are not only harmful, but in fact they're illegal, Madam Speaker. The American government just shrugs it off, despite the fact that this is illegal, Madam Speaker. Then there's more tariffs, more jobs lost in communities and cities like Port Alberni, and, and the West Coast and across Canada, Madam Speaker. And they're gone for good. They're hard to get back. We had the Sand Group open the first mill in 15 years, Madam Speaker, on, uh, on the coast of British Columbia just in the last few years. Now they're being hit with this. So the Conservatives, we know they'd like to cost our lumber industry more than they can afford by bringing in these tariffs, or they call it certainty, but it costs our lumber industry uh, and those producers more, Madam Speaker, and, and they're at an unfair plane advantage. And I was sitting with Ken McRae, four-time mayor. He uh, was actually 
um, uh, the negotiator for the Canadian Paper Workers Union for over a decade, and he also ran our Labour Council in Port Alberni for five years just the other day. And he started telling me about back in 1995, you know, writing a letter to Jean Chrétien, who was the Prime Minister at the time, asking him to make this a top priority. I have not seen that, Madam Speaker. I'm part of the Canada-US agreement. And like my friend from the block said, he's gone on these trips over the border. And while I've gone to Penoir repeatedly talking about the impact of the softwood lumber agreement in terms of our relationship. And we have not seen the, the Canadian government get organized and have a strategy of going in, uh, across the border. I hope that comes out of tonight's debate. In 1986 and in 2006, those agreements the Conservatives established uh, on, on, uh, they, they, they created export taxes on our softwood lumber in an attempt to appease the United States, Madam Speaker. Following the 2006 agreement, our lumber exports ended up being taxed by both Canada and the United States. And you could say that the Conservatives taxed the axe. So that's the language they'll understand. For mill workers in Port Alberni, the Liberal court battle doesn't mean much. Mills are being overcharged for wood, some are closing their doors for good, and many mill workers won't see a dime of the money that Liberals win in court. Another Conservative tax, uh, though, would make sure that those businesses would never recover. Either way, most mill workers can't afford to wait another 42 years for real change. It's time to fix it, Madam Speaker. It's time for the government to look at new possibilities instead of just trying the same thing over and over. It's time that we support our, our lumber industry in supporting itself. We've already taken a step in the right direction. Catalyst, for example, in my riding, they retooled their mill so that they could uh, make food-grade paper. When you go to Costco and you buy your hot dog, that's where it's made, adding eight times the value per tonne, Madam Speaker, of uh, fibre. Uh, I, we brought forward an, a biomass uh, expansion to the Clean Technology Investment Tax Credit, uh, working with the Minister of Natural Resources, and my riding led the charge, working with Catalyst uh, Paper in, in, my, in my community, Madam Speaker. It's projected to save mills in British Columbia up to $10 million per year. This was in the last uh, economic statement in the fall. We're hoping legislation comes forward quickly to enact that, uh, uh, that, uh, that tax credit, because this money is going to go back into communities giving workers in, our, in, in, the, in the industry some breathing room and a little more security. But it's just a start, Madam Speaker. After 42 years, we need to take another look at our dependence on raw softwood lumber. For 42 years, we've been propping up the same failing you know, issue in how we manage it, Madam Speaker, with loans and programs which only lead to more tariffs. Now we need to support our lumber industry in a transition towards more lucrative, environmentally friendly and future forward enterprises. In Port Alberni, we've seen prospective investors hoping to bring money into the community to create mass timber plants. Through targeted federal funding, we can support them and other uh, uh, lumber uh, 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 towns, Madam Speaker, that rely on, on, uh, on softwood lumber, Madam Speaker, and creating new jobs in a growth industry which uses all the same resources that those communities already have. And mass timber, Madam Speaker, can benefit Canada in more than just the health of the lumber industry. We've heard our NDP colleague that brought that forward from South Okanagan, uh, uh, Kutnik, uh, he, he brought that forward. And it can provide a new material which is more carbon friendly than metal or cement, which we can use to build infrastructure, skyscrapers, and the housing that are nation desperately needs that I raised earlier. We also need to further support the growth in our domestic market by encouraging Canadian companies to use wood in place of less sustainable materials in manufacturing. New developments in wood plastic alternatives can open up new industries to our softwood, uh, to, to, sorry, our supply of softwood lumber. We could reduce waste by helping the environment and generating Canadian wealth, like I talked about earlier in that tax credit. And after 42 years, we can finally try to do something different, Madam Speaker. We can strengthen mass timber and other Canadian wood product manufacturing. We can improve domestic demand and ensure that softwood moves from logging companies to Canadian mills and manufacturers. Funding for mass timber and wood manufacturing will create new jobs in regions where logging has and, and uh, mills have historically been a, a major industry. And families in Port Alberni, which have worked in lumber for generations, can remain in their community and harvest timber or create new higher value products, which then can be exported to the United States or other trading partners. And we need to look at those other trading partners, Madam Speaker. Those manufactured wood products, by the way, would be unaffected by the raw log tariffs. It's time that we start repeating, stop the repeating failures of the last 42 years, Madam Speaker, and time that we start looking at what we can do to strengthen the timber industry for the next 42 years. Madam Speaker, I know it's past my time, 
but it's certainly not time to start something new. Thank you.